up. Welcome back to Switch to Linux and our uh, duct tape production. And uh, we are, so I had to make a last minute decision what computer I was going to use because I have so far today drawn in 200 watts of power because it is winter and I am in the desert and it is extraordinarily like super thick clouds all day. So for comparison, that is enough for me to run the streaming computer for one hour. And uh, consequently, we would have to run it for more than an hour in order to do the stream. And, uh, and then what would happen is uh, I have to run the rest of my day's work, too. And so we're going to adjust my... We're going to go up a little bit in there and bring that down. I was a little bit too dark. And I didn't turn on... Uh, there was more lights I was going to turn on, and I didn't because we were running out of some stuff. We also have a, the absolute latest version of OBS we're running right now uh, using the um, PPA settings or the, yeah, the PPAs. So we're running, I think it's the absolute latest, uh, 30.0.1. Is that the latest? Um, and uh, and uh, we're going to test it out. Hopefully things work. Uh, oh, of course, I picked the wrong title screen, though. Um, I did have to rebuild a lot of my stuff because right last, last time we did this computer... Um, and then what happened is I uh, I went on and I attempted to uh, uh, I attempted to um, stream or I attempted to record a video afterwards and then <clears throat> OBS was just crashing every three seconds uh, so it's probably something wrong with the particular version so I went basically went back through there and I uh, installed the PPA, installed the absolute brand new version, and then I went through and I cleaned up all the weird stuff we have going on. I actually really liked I think I got really clean video. So let me know, does the video seem cleaner to you? It looks a little, lot cleaner on my end. Uh, new version of Caden Live is also a lot cleaner as well. Um, and so if I look up like this, it's because I, I inverted some things around and I have my monitoring screen up here. Maybe I should roll it over here. Hold on, let me change my monitoring around. Anyway, I think I unmuted everybody. How's everybody doing? I'm fine. Doing good. Uh, doing good. We're good. All right. So that's that's a little bit better. I'm I wonder, good. I wish I could put my previews at the bottom and those at the top because they'd be really close. I don't know. Maybe I can, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. It's working. That's all we care about. There you go. If it works, don't fix it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And that's why I don't update my computer much. It's working. Okay. I don't want to push updates and break something. That's <laughs> usually what happens. <laughs> um, so I think we're going to get into our topic. Oh, you know what? I actually never cleaned up. Uh, I don't think I, I got, went through and, and fixed up our, our uh, web view. I completely forgot to do that. Uh, I mean, it almost looks like it's working. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. It's working enough. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm not. No, it's not working because I'm not working right. Everything's still messed up over here. I mean, somebody, quick, talk. Um, Hello, so, how are uh, you? Yeah. Uh, Ivan, what's your next video coming out? I saw you did a, a promo for it. What's your next video? Uh, let's see. The one that came out today was introducing this workstation. Oh, okay. Good. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And we are just about there. I hate Jitsi. I want to move you, Jitsi. Okay, no, matter. Jitsi doesn't want to move. We're going to stick with it. It's fine. Jitsi's being uh, being problematic. I don't care. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into our topic, shall we? Google account breaches. Uh, so the Google account breaches uh, came out uh, this last, uh, last week. Uh, Bleeping Computer had one of the best, um, uh, more basic write-ups. The exact thing came from CloudSec. And this is probably the thing that caused the breach of Linus Tech Tips and um, Matthew Moore and other people, uh, because you know these people are like they're using they're using Chrome or Chrome-based browsers, and for the most part, and they get involved in something, and then all of a sudden somehow their uh, their accounts are compromised. People were able to get in there and start messing with them. So this was actually first identified back in October of 2023. So it was identified then. So we're pushing around that period of time when that breach happened on, on those individuals. And so what these guys found is malware was able to, uh, to get in and do some tweaking with the, uh, basically do some tweaking with the OAuth system that Google has in the Chromium browsers 
for um, uh, multi-user logins. So it's multi. It's the multi-login package. Now, multi-login package is not a Chromium proprietary blob. It is in the Chromium code base. So unless some downstream browser from Chromium explicitly removes it, any Chromium browser is going to be susceptible to this breach. So that really is a problem, although technically the breach is more on Google's end. And to my understanding, they can solve this on their end without forcing a browser update, although it would be really nice if they force it because a, a compromise in multi-login is what led to this. So first it involves visiting a site that installs malware on your computer. And then what the malware does is it goes through and resurrects old session login cookies. And as it's doing this... Um, it's going to uh, uh, it's going to be able to log back into your Google accounts even after you've changed your password. So uh, this is the executive summary from CloudSec. In October 2023, Prisma, a developer, uncovered a critical exploit that allows the generation of persistent Google cookies through token manipulation. This exploit enables continuous access to Google services even after a user's password is reset. A client threat actor later reverse engineered the script and incorporated it into Luma InfoStealer. And protecting the methodology with advanced black boxing techniques, this marked the beginning of a ripple effect as the exploit gradually spread among various other malware groups, keep on par with unique features. So a variety of different groups took advantage of this. So the first exploit was revealed on a Telegram channel in October. In November, uh, Luma announces the features integration with an advanced black boxing. So this is a way to obscure that this is occurring. And then um, uh, November 17th, uh, Red Manthus announces a feature with similar black boxing approaches. Luma updates the exploit to counteract Google's fraud detection measures. That's exciting. Uh, December 1st, uh, 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 implemented the Google account token restore feature in uh, SteelSeek, uh, Medusa, Rise Pro, and White Snake all implemented this. December 27th, Hudson Rock posts a video from Dark Web where a hacker shows exploiting it the generated cookies. And so that's kind of terrifying, being as that a lot of people, it's not just like YouTube accounts, but it's Google accounts in general. So anybody who is utilizing a Google account is potentially at risk if you get malware on your system. So that's your basic executive summary of what's going on. Anybody want to have some commentary while I sip some coffee in my amazing shop.switchlinux.com travel mug? <laughs> Anybody want to jump in? I don't know if Mark's talking or not because he's muted, but uh, hmm. all right. All right. If not, I'll jump on. I don't have my notes. Didn't I, change, I forgot to bring up my uh, session notes in front of me. So, oh, well, whoops. So if I missed something from the session notes I sent you guys, please let me know. All right. So how do we mitigate against this? Um, this it deals with OAuth. Uh, so I did want to talk briefly about OAuth. This is the current method of authorization. It's the standard that allows websites or applications to uh, access, uh, basically to, to log in and have security tokens. Oh, our clicking is back. Is that Mark? No? Hmm. Okay. I'm going to mute the desktop until we figure that out. Solboot. Looks like it's on your end. Yeah, we're getting like massive cr crickling. It is like deafening me. <laughs> but it looks like it's on Solboot's end. Is it Solboot's end? Yeah, it was Solboot's end. Oh. Yep, it's back. Yeah, son, son, Salvo's end. Fortunately, you guys, uh, you guys got muted. If you guys need to talk again, remind me to unmute yourself. All right. Um, so, what is OAuth? Uh, so, basically, this is just the way of getting into your access tokens. Uh, this is where your multi-factor authentication utilizes OAuth to get into your systems and things like that. And so. There's really nothing special about it, but the vulnerability is in the OAuth system, not in OAuth itself, but in how Google implemented the OAuth in the instance of the Chromium browser. In fact, uh, CloudSec actually 
does point out that this is something that is in the Chromium package base, not the Chrome browser, because remember the Chrome browser is an open source Chromium with proprietary Google blobs in it. So these are inside of the, the Chromium code. So any Chromium browser that does not explicitly remove this is likely uh, vulnerable and um, most likely ungoogled Chromium is probably safe from this because it is a Google APIs and ungoogled Chromium removes everything related to Google. So my guess is that is safe. And as far as any other browser, I would probably poke around and, and or ask the developer, hey, do you have multi-login enabled from Google, i.e. are you vulnerable? Now, Google has its own uh, statement. This is um, the first thing that it says is they want you to manage and hence safe browsing. This is not actually the silver bullet. Um, what so so there's safe browsing and there's enhanced safe browsing. These are two things involved in the uh, in the Chromium browser that will protect your system. So safe browsing is an offline list of known bad sites that are attached to your uh, your account. Uh, they're not your account, they're attached to, to the internet at large. So known phishing sites, known malicious sites, sites that are suspect. So that is more privacy focused with the safe browsing because the list is downloaded and then they're checked on it locally on the machine. And hence safe browsing is not privacy focused because it, is active. So and hence safe browsing is always updated more live. And so when you turn on enhanced safe browsing, it double checks that the sites you're visiting are not malicious. This is going to protect you from getting your computer originally uh, installed malware. But if the malware is already on your computer or gets onto your site from some other means, then it does not protect you. And it isn't going to protect everything. So their idea of just enabling and hence safe browsing, it's just a way for them to get more of your data because they do say that it does send information um, back. So it, it's going to send information and then it affiliates that information with your account for the period of time it takes to check that and then send back the, the signal back. So that's what they're saying. Now the actual fix, the actual thing that solves this problem is if you revoke the tokens. So inside of your Google account, you can sign into your Google account and under your security, you can boot certain computers out, you can manage your security tokens, and that is your first way. Your second way is if you log out of your browser and then you log in, after changing a password. So if you ever have to change your Google password, you want to log out of the browser and then log back in because it's the function of logging out that expires the session token and the resurrected session token is not as successful as one that remains even after a password change. So if you ever have to change your Google password, sign out entirely and then sign back in. Those are your two basic uh, methodologies to fix. All right, anyone want to have any comments on this? Yeah, I saw the uh, in, uh, official instructions uh, from uh, Google in the article about uh, how to do this. Uh, and in, uh, what caught my eye is um, I'm sure there is something that um, is obvious to uh, the one who, who uh, uh, wrote this, but uh, they say that to log out of your uh, account, then change your password and then go back in. And I was thinking, how do you change your password uh, without log um, uh, by logging out? But I think the point is uh, uh, on the browser, uh, uh, log out and then maybe use another browser to log in and change the password in case. Uh... Yeah, to my understanding, though, logging out entirely is actually a good fix. So you can change your password and then log out and then log in. But then you might also want to go online uh, onto your security uh, in your account and check where you have security tokens at. I think that that's probably... Uh, yeah, and they also uh, say that you can in the uh, um, apparently there is a devices tab somewhere, um, yes. and you can um, and uh, um, uh, in uh, just to be safe, you should you uh, use that uh, tab and to log out every other session except the current uh, browser. Mm -hmm. um, um and in essential forcing the app or the uh, whatever is, is using it to log in uh, a, a second time yeah so this might be something you add to your regular uh, procedures for for security is 
once a month, go through, unlock un- un- in from everything, log out of everything, unlog in. <laughs> Great, I'm making up words again. It's <laughs> a weird way. Uh, log out again uh, of everything and then log back into the things that you need. It. And you might even find that, hey, I don't actually access Google on this computer anymore. So it's not worth having the login token there. Um, in my case, I have three different computers I might be logged in. So actually, I think of four different computers I might be logged in from. So there's that. All right. Um, so there is that. Um, I have ah. anything. Oh, go ahead, Mark. Oh, I was just going to say um, my only concern is right off the top of my head, I had a couple of different streams of thoughts there. Right off the couple of top of my head, I'm just concerned that this is just not going to be just a Google thing. I'm concerned that it's something in the original code base for OAuth 2.0 and that we're going to see this down the line become more of an issue. Yeah, it does Um, not appear to be an issue in OAuth. It appears to be specifically an issue with multi-login, which is mostly tied to Google accounts, to my knowledge. However, being that everything in its brother is right now giving you pop-up prompts to sign in with Google or Facebook, those probably are also equally impacted. I don't know. Yeah, that's why you should never do that. You should mm-hmm. never... Lo- if you're going to have an account with anybody, make it a separate login. Um, really, you know, at one point in time, I'd say turn, in, turn on two-factor authentication, but the way things are going now, we're seeing that you may just be better off of like a really, really strong password and yeah, strong I, and long. I like that. It's like, I think two factor authentication is good. So long as you're not tying it to a phone number. Yeah. You should, everyone should have a UB key. If you don't do that, you can have key pass XC and you can, uh, you can, you can use key pass XC database for, uh, for doing multi-factor authentication. Anything you can do on Google authenticator, I believe you can also do on key pass. Now, if you're yeah. concerned, well, that's something else. Say, I, somebody actually left me that comment. Well, that's supposed to be something you know and something you have. This puts it all in the same place. Yeah, it's it's fine putting it there. But if you really want to be that paranoid, and I get paranoid, that's fine, um, have a separate database. One of your database contains your passwords, and the other database contains your um, multi-factor tokens. You can do well, that. I mean, you can run an- multiple. Another tokens. feature that I feel like everybody should have at this point uh, brute force protection after a certain amount of uh, login tries, it should uh, lock people out. Um, now, another thing is um, IP restrictions. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe set it to where um, yeah, m- you most... can only log into Google from this computer on this IP address. Oh, hell no. Hell no. No. Not a chance. Is Google that... is so screwed up. Uh, that you start doing that kind of stuff, you have all manner of issues, especially being is that most people don't have a static IP address. Most people have a dynamic right. IP address. Even if it's generally stays the same most of the time, if you have a power outage and your IP address resets, how are you getting back into your account? Well, I, and, and I find that PayPal does seem to do range. something with IP addresses, and I have nightmare scenarios with PayPal because of that. I understand so, that. Yeah, that yeah. could, that could, yeah, you're probably right there. I feel like definitely. Yeah, yeah it could, it could pose people. some issues. But if you're, a, if you're a business or something and you do have a static IP on everything, it would be nice to have that feature. But as a general rule, yeah, for the general public, I'd say do yeah. not do that. I mean, yeah. I, I do like Facebook, Meta. Uh, like Meta, Microsoft, and Google, they will send you a, a security alert if a unusual yeah, IP signs in. I think that that's appropriate because then I get it really quick. In fact, when I was, uh, um, you know, I was doing doing work. One of my clients, I have to log into Facebook, and uh, you know, we were at I was at the the camp last July, and I was doing his articles, and you know, we logged in. Now I have my YubiKey tied to the, his Facebook account so that I can log in without contacting him for, for multi-factor stuff. And, uh, you know, we got we got a security alert there, and I and I saw that the security alert was going to show up, and so I just texted him yeah. right away. I'm like, hey, just an FYI, sec- Facebook's probably going to send you a security alert. That's fine. That's yeah, they do that. But, yeah, I've, I've um, told my clients the same thing. Yeah, and so so that really is uh, – that really is uh, – yeah, and another approach. thing when I'm working for clients, I, I 
certain things, like if I'm working with their specific accounts, even if it's my cloud servicing that I offer, I make sure that I'm, I'm connected to their computer, you know, when I'm changing certain details, like on their, if I'm doing anything with their account that mm -hmm. they've authorized. And I don't like really log into anything remotely or want to know the logins of anything that is outside of the scope of my services. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. getting to the point I, I don't touch it and I just like I, yeah, I don't I'm I'm kind of like feeling know stuff bit. or collect stuff. Yeah. Um yeah. Uh, Ivan, did you have thoughts? Uh not in particular, no. I just know that it's a, it's 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 it can be a sensitive situation if if you're not keeping track of it, again, keeping your eyes open. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, let let family members of uh, more non techy people know about the issues going on. Uh, Dan, you do have thoughts. Dan's have Dan's microphone's having a few issues. Just an FYI, but can you but, hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can we can hear you. It's just that there's like this high pitch, but it's, it's okay. still buzzing. It, it is, but as long as you're talking, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Opened up uh, Audacity, and you can see it in the recording on Audacity that it's buzzing. Um. Um, I really don't, I, I guess use the best online, uh, protection practices that you can and, uh, you know, uh, use strong passwords and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not really, uh, expert in this particular area myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, it, it's good to be aware of the, the issue here. Uh, certain is, services have a lockout after a certain amount of time being logged in. It will log you out. Yeah, and that, that relates right. mostly to the session cookies. So it's going to be really yeah. interesting what happens when all the session cookies yeah. disappear out of Chromium and nobody can stay logged in anything except Google. <laughs> it's like, mm. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Good um, luck getting support on that. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. You're not gonna get but none. that's uh, that's generally all of the content we had today. Hopefully that was fun and fascinating. I do want to get into just some general updates. We'll get into the comments here, uh, videos. I, I have a nice video on uh, Linux desktop in 2024. Um, that's in the editing <laughs> bin now. We have a tinfoil hat <clears throat> time that is still in the editing bin. Uh, and uh, that one will probably be next week, maybe next Saturday, not this Saturday. It's just the tinfoil hat time just takes so long to edit. And consequently, I'm not a huge fan of editing, so it takes a while. Um, and uh, I do have, there's some Linux Mint updates that we will get into on, I think that's going to be our video for tomorrow. So that'll be fun. And, editing uh, could be fun if there was way more time. Like I just, there's no time. I, I need to be able to edit in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to increase the the editing game. I'm really. I'm trying to increase the production game a little bit. Yeah. Um. I want to. I want to see if we can't can't replace one of the other income streams I have entirely with video content creation here. The good uh, thing is, you do so, it enough, you start to build up a process that you yeah. just follow naturally, yeah. and it just becomes a part of a routine. Yeah, and you end absolutely. up getting so much faster. Um, at it. We, we did uh, we did get the Rumble payout. Rumble actually paid, so excellent. Uh, we are keeping the hey. Rumble account going, and I'm I'm trying to remember to upload the videos to Rumble when I upload new videos. Sometimes yeah. I remember, and sometimes I don't. <laughs> so, um, so it's still rely more reliable to find the videos over on Odyssey, BitChute, or YouTube. Um, Rumble, uh, as I remember them, I did update. I did upload. Um, some of the videos from this weekend, from this last weekend to, uh, to it. So that's that. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and check in on some comments. Once again, if anybody sees a comment you'd love to read, go ahead and read it. But there one last uh, comment. Um, yep. one thing that I think, uh, remember that, um, uh, Linus Tech Tips, um, mentioned on the, uh, van show where they, uh, in great length uh, talked about what happened to their account and, uh, mm -hmm. so on. Uh, one thing that, uh, Linus, uh, clearly talking to you to uh, google and uh, youtube admins and so on uh, one change that they could uh, implement if they wanted to um is that um, um uh, for um, uh, stealing session cookies um, um if they uh, he think that there should be a restriction somewhere um uh, uh, saying that uh, uh, if the ip ad address changed uh, 
um, uh, where the session cookie um, is uh, seen at another IP address, the other IP address should be forced to log in again with a password and um, mm -hmm. the whole ship. Yeah, which, the, what, which, uh, what this is, uh, a loophole. Yeah, one of the things in this in this issue is even if the IP address changes, it still let you in by resurrecting their security tokens. So it was uh, it was a change in password or even a change in IP address still let you in? Yeah, but if the um, uh, restriction was that if the um, um, this uh, thing uh, um, um, the auth uh, authenticated uh, uh, login, which essentially this um, uh, bug is. If the uh, an, uh, if the um, authorized login came from another IP address, uh, it, the um, one coming from the new IP address should be forced to log in, providing a password, which would block all all, all of this. In theory, yes, but yeah. this malware did not care what the IP address was. That was the point. Because, yeah, yeah, because yeah, because they don't have to, because um, uh, Google is the one who has to for uh, to enforce this. Yeah, if, uh, if Google don't. enforced it, that that would be correct. Yes. Yeah. So if Google enforced it, that would certainly help. I agree with that. Yes. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Night of Light, Commodore fan. Uh, let's see. Case, uh, I would let's see. In that case, I would a conscious knowing they're doing something bad. Um, yeah, talking about I guess uh, um, uh, good actors breaking in. Well, you know, um, if good actors are breaking in, you know, are there any good actors? <laughs> Hollywood, what? <laughs> uh, cloudy and rainy. Yeah, it's actually it's not actually an actor. I'm cloudy real, and rainy yeah. in the desert here too. Yeah, it's like, see, I have, I have the only thing I have on in the van right now is my monitors and my studio lights, and I am still at, uh, oh, and I have my internet and my router on, I'm still at 13.1 volts. <laughs> Yikes, that's low, because I have a whole night of work yet tonight, so... Oh boy. Well, that's why we're doing the laptop today, because my old, my good old backup battery's sitting at eighty-five percent right now, and uh, that'll get me through the end of the show and uh, a few hours tonight, and then this will be completely charged, and then uh, I guess after that yeah, we'll yeah. just one clock a grotto pose on the magazine. Yeah, but tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow is full sun and church day tomorrow, and so um, I'll be able to plug into the wall. And I might, if the power is too low and I don't get enough time, I might actually just stay at the church building until I finish putting together the news tomorrow night. And that way, it's just, you know, whatever. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Play that by ears. But Moonbase is back. How are you feeling, Moonbase? Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, don't don't tag me to your leader right now. <laughs> yeah. He'll be sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to your leader. I have a brand pudding and prune, <laughs> brand bread and prune pudding. <laughs> yeah, please uh, postpone the uh, uh, rapture until after this is finished. <laughs> well, I mean, at least I don't know about 2024, but 2028 is going to be fascinating because we can all vote for if we want. Because, like, I mean, the, the, the person comes in office like early the next year, right? And so. What we have to vote for in 2028 is Apophis, the Comet of Doom. Yeah. Uh, so if enough of us vote for the Apophis Comet of Doom, maybe the thing will hit us. It is a quarter mile in length. It is an extinction level event comet heading straight for the Earth right now. Come on. Wow. Guys. That's, <laughs> That's what I'm voting for in 2028. <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to, I don't know. My life has improved so much. I, I don't want to let go of this fast. <laughs> Get out while getting's good. <laughs> Let's fact Google account of Firefox browser. Not that I know of. Uh, to my knowledge, this the the breach deals specifically with the uh, the multi login feature built into the Chromium core. So to my knowledge, it does not impact um, Firefox. I just had a movie idea based on the Apophis uh, meteorite or something. Um, uh, imagine it uh, actually hitting the earth and uh, destroying everything and all life ended uh, just like that and all devices shut off and everything except for uh, two device uh, two uh, there two uh, um, uh, spacecraft uh, Voyager one and two which is, is going out and um, imagine they uh, would uh, have some logic that no one knew about uh, which was highly classified that if something happened they would uh, 
start communicating with each other and trying to debug a problem of some sort of uh, yeah. trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> or the, the ground shaking of, of Apophis uh, even coming near sets off the, the mad program from Russia and then that initiates World War III. Wouldn't that be fascinating? <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. They actually did that in a movie once in oh uh, in uh, the night. In the in, uh, 1980s, uh, in, in, in 1980, uh, there was a Japanese movie, which in English is called The Virus, it, um, uh, where uh, um, uh, a, a rich uh, um, uh, biological uh, research laboratory in uh, northern Italy, uh, um, an accident happened um, while transporting um, a sample uh, from Italy to Germany, and the plane fell down in the northern Italy. And uh, the whole earth uh, died because of the virus, except for everyone who was below 20, minus 20 degrees, which was uh, a few submarines uh, escaped. Uh, uh, and all everyone who was, was lived on in the uh, South Pole, where the temperature was minus 50 or something. Mm, um, yeah. So they actually did this once. Um, uh, and, uh, it, uh, and there was an earthquake, and no one was there to stop it. And uh, um, the Soviet Union uh, launched all their uh, 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 missiles towards the United States, which sent all of them towards uh, Russia and the East Bloc, and so on. Yeah. And that was the um, end of the movie. We have here uh, what is the best way to sync key pass uh, XC passwords? Uh, there's the best way to quote unquote sync would be something. Uh, Something like a Nextcloud or something where you're uh, you're doing you're doing some automated sync. I'm not sure I'd trust that personally. So what I actually do is I have one computer that contains what I consider the absolute master, and we'll make changes. But then what I end up doing is I make a note of any password changes or new new passwords, and those get stored in a secure folder on my NAS server, and then. Usually, like once a month, I'll go into the master computer. I'll update the file, and then I'll distribute that file out to all the devices. I just prefer to do things more manually than automated. But the best automated yeah. way would be to have a copy of it in like a Nextcloud server, and then use a uh, use the Nextcloud syncing client or some other form of syncing client. And that does not have to be a Nextcloud on the internet. In fact, I wouldn't even do that. I would do that as a just as a, a local installation of Nextcloud. And with the local installation of Nextcloud, then um, what you're going to do with it is um, you're going to just be able to sync it up when you're at your home network. So that's the best way to do with that. Yeah. And uh, for those it. who don't want to or, uh, or, or don't have the ability to run a separate server in order to do this, uh, an alternative is a uh, sync thing which uh, synchronizes directly between computers mm -hmm. in your own network. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ricky's over here lying to us. He says he's on Debian KDE with Wayland, having a great experience, having no problems at all. I just don't believe you, Ricky. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give it a minute, dude. <laughs> uh, oh, one of the uh, it'll be in our in our uh, Linux news this week. We're not going to do a standalone video on it, so it'll be on our Linux news this week. Um, one of the big screen recorders. Not, it's not simple screen recorder, sadly, but one of the other big screen recorders did get itself working with Wayland. So we'll talk about that. I forget which one it is. You'll hear about it on Friday. <laughs> All right. Uh, T-Mobile 5G Internet. Uh, what is the static IP? Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, like I have, um, I have a, a static first three blocks, but the last three blocks of mine will, will rotate because Verizon has a big block of IPs. So, you know, that's, and that's the, what I'm on. You purchase a plan specifically to locate block, a block of IP. That's, in, that's really well, interesting. That's, that's most, most cases. Your home internet's not going to be some totally different IP address. Usually, mm -hmm. the first the first three blocks are the same because yeah. IP blocks are sold by the by the the blockage. You know, they're sold by the pound or the block. You know, <laughs> home, home networks are Class C networks. Sold by the quid. Typically, yeah, you're only forgot it's, about uh, that. bubble wrap. Oh, that's what it was. Uh, uh, Saldu was stopped, was yeah. unboxing something. He's getting ready for an unboxing video on the Did microphone. Right? <laughs> Did you figure out what the problem was, Saldu? Uh, yeah, I just uh, disconnected the uh, microphone and uh, reconnected it. And, uh, okay. Yep, that, that's Commodore fan says bad. Sounds like a bad cable. Business yeah. had, has a fixed up fixed IP. It's better to host or an email server. Yeah, that's why businesses often get fixed IPs for that reason alone. Um, but a Ubico 5C since you can't buy the older blue ones. Awesome. Very good. 
Congratulations for upping your security lemon squeeze. Uh, yeah, gonna well, too uh, that's going to happen yeah. very soon. That that needs to happen in quarter one for me across the board. Not, I probably, again, I need to test everything internal, get used to it, and then roll it out to clients. That, uh, that's best practice. Uh, let's see. Charge your batteries from the car alternator. I don't want to. Um, I do not want to run my engine generator because that just burns gasoline and tomorrow's a bright and sunny day and I'm going to, to church tomorrow and I can plug into the church all day long. <laughs> and by the way, uh, you do use it, but uh, when traveling from point to point. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll turn it on for sure. I'll turn it on in the morning when I drive to town. Um, I'll turn it on when I come from town back to the desert, but I'm not like... Right now, power is not critical that I have to turn on the engine charger to charge the batteries back here. That's why, you know, and the laptop, I, that's why I bought this laptop is because it's a it's a laptop I can legitimately stream on. It looks like the well, on my end, this, it looks good. Let me know online. Does uh, is the quality really good? Let me let me know, guys. Um, but uh, in the comments. But, you know, and, and I have my backup battery as well, which I keep completely charged for reasons like this. So I'll probably run that. Yeah, the video on the uh, video feed on YouTube is very crisp. Yeah, yeah, that, that's really good. good. And I think I one really one. think this new version of OBS did, did a lot for yeah. making a lot better quality video, too. Uh, OBS is excellent software and it's open yeah. source. Yep. So. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's critical, I can all I do have the option to turn the engine on, but it's you know I have to run the engine for a good half hour just to get any decent amount of charge in. But by just preserving my power, I can do that. So I'll probably be at 20, 20, 12.8 or twelve point nine in the morning, which I can run on that in the morning. That's fine. And it, if it's, it's too amazing. bad, yeah. If it's too bad, uh, like if I get up, it's too bad in the morning. I'll just drive to town early and plug into the church early. It's, a big deal. it's amazing what all you have set up yeah. in a van. It just goes to show you with the right mindset, a lot can be accomplished. Yeah, you, that, you that don't have to do things a uh, uh, cookie cutter standard way that everybody else does and lives their life. You can kind of carve your own path, and I, I admire you for doing that. I think it takes a lot of courage and a lot of guts. A lot of a lot of brains too. So a uh, schoolie that is set for it says possible. Of course it's possible. I that's I have an engine charger. It's right there. Now I'm not charging off my alternator. Um, there there's two ways to do it. You <laughs> you can do a you can do a um, uh, a DC to DC charger or you can do uh, it's called a BIM uh, um, a battery isolation module. The BIM actually charges off your alternator, but it causes it it wears out the alternator more. Uh, you should never do it with lithium batteries unless you have a specific lithium battery BIM and it will stress out your car engine more because it toggles the power between your house batteries and your engine battery, which is not something you want to do usually. You really want to keep your car battery constantly charged with the alternator. So you use a DC to DC charger, which takes the, it does still take some of the alternator current, but it takes the whole engine current as the whole engine's running and then that drives it out, but then it also steps up the voltage to uh, be able to completely top it off because a BIM or an alternator charge cannot top off batteries, but a DC to DC charger can because of a step up voltage. So, Dan, your um, background is awesome. Well, is that well, from a movie? No, it's he's he's uh, I mean fairly close to Detroit, so that's just what it looks like down there. So. <laughs> yeah, By the way, uh, we can we can hear you, Dan. Yeah, you're still muted. I think. Are you? Yeah. yeah, there he goes. Okay. I can't hear him yet. Yeah, me neither. Mm, so, any on two? Yeah, get two. Sec always get if you're getting Yubi keys, get two Yubi keys. Yeah. Um, because one you want be one of them for backup, outside. and you want one as the as the primary one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Just saved a Put laptop one. from recycling, and getting Linux Mint on it. Very sweet. Put one away, kind of way in a safe spot or like even in a P.O. box somewhere in case you need a backup. Okay. Maybe even do three. I don't know. Wish I can live in a van down by the river. I know, right? All right. Let's well, jump Your run is uh, four-wheel drive, is it? We got – what's that? Uh, your run, is it uh, uh, four-wheel drive? No, it's not four-wheel drive. Yeah. We got 14 over on Odyssey. It looks like I need to reset Odyssey. I only have like three chats over there. Let me reset Odyssey. Re reload Odyssey there. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. That's all. That you guys aren't active over there on Odyssey. Yeah, it's pretty Good quiet. Evening. Hello. Good evening. Pretty quiet out here. Oh boy. Yeah, that's uh, it. And Rumble twenty two over there. Uh, Cook it. Hello, world. Watching from North Cold Northwest Iowa. All right. Hey, one of the guys visiting our church right now is from Iowa. Um, let's see. Seriously, that's a laptop webcam. I'm shocked at how crisp it is. Uh, so Jitsi is running the the webcam laptop. You guys on the stream, that camera that I'm pointing to there, that is a that is a um, uh, 1080p DSLR. So. Uh, but the uh, the the other guys on Jitsi, they have the really crappy webcam one, so they're not seeing anything yeah, amazing. The, but that's the pixelated, okay. ugly anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's pixelated, choppy goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, I I actually have another webcam up here, but um, I am completely out of ports on my computer. <laughs> um, you should get a hub. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I I I have one buried down here somewhere, but it's just like. I've actually like hubs do have a problem if you're plugging multiple different um, yes I/O device types devices. I could probably yes. put the hub over on the USB two port over here and run the webcam and the mouse off of that one. But like every point, I wish I could uh, easily show you guys the setup here because I got like there's like six wires coming out of the one side of the laptop, and then I have my little USB mouse dongle over here. I got uh, I got the HDMI cable to the external monitor. I had the power plug plug plugged in. Uh, I'm actually plugged into the Ethernet line to make sure we have good, solid, stronger internet. Uh, we got the capture card for the DSLR. We got the uh, USB codec for the um, microphone set up uh, for this this beautiful beast here. And then we got the uh, headphone port. There's not a plug in that or a port that doesn't have something jammed into it on this thing. Except, um, I mean, I do take that back. I mean, I could, I could always plug in one of these, uh, one of these SD cards and completely max the entire computer out. But, uh, do that. Yeah. um, yeah. All right. So it looks like we bit, been through all of our comments. It looks like we got uh, type of things over here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Ta-da. Maybe you should consider selling Raspberry Pi email solutions with battery and solar panel business. Ooh, that'd be fun. I don't know. I'd, I'd want to. I don't know. I I should uh, I should get with Salbu here and uh, figure out better email exchange uh, systems. Um, the problem is obviously I don't have a home server I can run it through, so I'd have to run it through a cloud cloud device. And running an email server on a Raspberry Pi wouldn't be a good thing, but running a next cloud instance on a Raspberry Pi and selling those, I could probably do that. Yeah. Um, in fact, I've talked about it with a couple people before. Um, I've noticed people are overall less active on Odyssey during the live streams. It depends. Mine on, on Fridays gets usually there. I think it's it's just after the new year. You know, some people may have made New Year's resolutions to stop watching that crazy unhinged lunatic over there at Switch to Linux. Who knows? You know, <laughs> um, although our YouTube count, view count is really high right now. So why don't you buy a yeah, cheaper, higher capacity... Wait. Okay. That's okay. Hey, Keegan just came in and and gave me another comment. So uh, it moved the thing up so I can actually read it and pass that stupid art. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you buy a higher capacity secure digital SD card? I wouldn't mean a higher capacity. I have a ton of them. <laughs> um. Good evening, Keegan. How's it going over there? Um, Spreadsheets. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at maps right now to figure out which direction I'm going to head east uh, again. So I'm trying to think: should I go go through Tennessee again? You guys, let me let me know. Should I go through Tennessee again? Tennessee, you see me, Kagan, the Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you wanted to, what what big area, no. what big city are you near, Mark? Well, if you didn't want to see me, I wouldn't. I would. I would understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, what big city are you near? I'm in uh, Wilkes County. I'm a uh, I'm near Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, okay. I'm about uh, what? How? How? Um, well, not really near. Walk. You know where Winston Salem is? Yeah. Okay. If not Winston, probably the next biggest city, maybe Hickory, NC. You know where that is? But coming up, like you're coming kind of south, coming up. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. 
So I'm about, uh, I'd say, 45 minutes from Taylorsville, and then you get into Taylorsville, and you're really close to Hickory I, there. Yeah, last year I actually camped at, at uh, Cherokee. Nice. Which is not yeah, Cherokee's, too far from uh, Cherokee casinos are not far from all. Not far at all, really. I mean, so, so I, I well, Mark, well, uh, well, we can meet up because I actually every uh, every March <laughs> I I go down to uh, uh, Northern South Carolina for a little bit, so I shoot through okay. that various area to get up to. Um, uh, Rona. We'll figure that out. Yeah, yep. we'll figure that out. All right. Well, um, I think uh, let's see. Uh, best option to sync key pass passwords. Oh yeah, I, I already covered that one. I think the best option is to have a, a local Nextcloud instance with uh, a Nextcloud um, uh, a Nextcloud file sync desktop application in your system. Uh, here all week, folks. Don't forget to try the fish. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right, all right. I think we're gonna wrap up the live portion. If you want to hang out uh, off uh, off camera, uh, we'll go ahead and log into Jitsi here in just a few minutes. We're gonna wrap this up. Let me just double check, make sure nobody else showed up anywhere else. We got seventeen, uh, seventeen on Odyssey, seventeen on Rumble, and thirty five on the Tubies. All right, thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, tomorrow, I think we're gonna talk some Linux Mint updates, um, and then Saturday, let's see, Friday weekly news roundup. Saturday. Um, I will probably have my state of the Linux desktop 2024 video. That's most likely going to happen that day. And then, uh, Sunday, I think what I decided we're going to do is because we're recording the Linux news as a separate thing now in the weekly news roundup. I think I'm going to start rolling those out on Sunday, uh, just to bring back a Sunday video again. Uh, we're going to see how that does for a little bit. And, um, uh, with that, uh, uh, next week, I have a few other things in the hopper, although I don't know what's going to be edited by then. So we'll see. Um, but would you guys want to see more on um, more on businessy type solutions or what type of content? Another fun one I have. I'm going to wait until the end of January for this. Uh, I'm going to dig into the financial uh, YouTuber world and talk about some of their favorite programs and why you shouldn't use those and Linux alternatives for that. That'll be fun. Um, but I'm going to do a month worth of expenses on the Linux system so I actually have cool graphs and stuff to show. <laughs> so uh, That'll be that, though, guys. Um, and uh, we will uh, we'll jump off the live portion. We'll hang out here online for a little bit after that. With that, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Peace.